Welcome back to the Ronnie and Ernie Show. I'm Ron Williams. I'm a sommelier and wine specialist. And... I'm Ernie Zahn. I'm a filmmaker and I'm also a film buff. And I went to school um, and majored in history. <laughs> so does that mean you're a film historian? Um, quite possibly. I, I organize information in a temporal manner, in a chronological manner. So... When I learn things about film, they're definitely in the historic context. So yeah, let's say yes. Each week we get together and discuss our shared interests. And despite our very different lines of work, it's our shared interests that give us an opportunity to collaborate on various projects. So sometimes you'll hear about those things on this very podcast. Yeah, and sometimes uh, we uh, tread into each other's territory, like right now. Like today, yes. So... um, I have a recipe this week I'm for the first time ever. This. this is episode 12, so we've gone thus this far with each of us remaining within the confines of um, what we know and what we can do. And I'm breaking that today by sharing a recipe that uh, you know. Um, I do. I've, I've cooked for you. You have, actually. And I can't believe I've cooked for you. That just feels crazy. That well, seems crazy to me. That's like, it's like you made a movie by yourself without talking with me, without yeah. collaborating with me on it, and you said <laughs> yeah. you made a movie and you wanted to share it. I'm not talking about video content for the Bon Vivant or something like that. I'm saying yeah. you made a like movie. A, a film. A, yes. Yeah, exactly. You made a film about, <laughs> I don't even know what it would be about. <laughs> Who cares? It does, the subject is irrelevant. It was yeah. about the Queen of Spain. Wow, that would be know. interesting, actually. I'd be impressed. Um, <laughs> it was a period okay. piece. So, uh, this recipe, um, yeah. it comes in I'm different nervous. forms ac- across Latin America, right? Uh, mine mine is mm, like 90% Cuban. There are a couple of things that I introduce sometimes into this that come from the Costa Rican version, mostly in just the sides Oh God! What do um, you experiment with? That go with the with? main dish. Um, I, I <laughs> what? I try. I try not to. Um, I try not. I try not to deviate too much. Okay, thank God. The way All right. my philosophy is, um, it's okay to break the rules as long as you understand the rules. And I also go by. Um, are you familiar with Robert Rodriguez? I know of him. He's a director, filmmaker. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Spy Kids. Um, so okay. he has a philosophy around cooking because food is a really important feature to storytelling for him, mm-hmm. um, just in terms of food that's being featured and how people consume it, etc. cetera. Um, he said um, it's great to focus on five dishes, like – Pick five dishes for the rest of your life and just keep working on them and perfecting and improving them. If you're not in the culinary world, if you're just an ordinary person, but you enjoy cooking and you want this as a hobby, pick five dishes Hmm. and just keep um, tweaking them and adjusting them, making them your own. Um, The more you understand them, the more you work with them, the more you can begin to create something uniquely yours that um, can enable you to connect with other people and Be a good host. Um, And be creative. Um, So my recipe is... Yeah. So my recipe is ropa vieja. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've cooked this for you. Um, Mm -hmm. um, We have a couple of stories attached to this recipe. But before we get into that, um, let me just kind of break down my version of the recipe. It's a Cuban dish, right? Um... It's uh, slow roasted flank steak. Yeah, you could um, even go as far as to say braised. Yeah, because that's pretty much what you're doing. So yeah, braised. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's it's main ingredients. Um, I'll, I'll go through some of the more distinctive ingredients. You want to make sure that you have beef broth. Um, this version, this is more of like a family style version because it includes a lot of sides and so you want more people in the kitchen helping you make the dish it's a party it's a party time um three pounds of flank steak 
um, and then you want to combine that with, and I'll provide the exact measurements in the description, um, you want to include some olive oil, beef broth, uh, this calls for almost all of them that I've seen, all the versions of this call for cilantro. I know that you have a cilantro aversion, I but, do. and I know it tastes like soap for you, but mm -hmm. I'm betting that if you genetically did not have that in your code, or if you could, you know, donate your body to CRISPR experiments at Columbia University, and you could delete that from your genetic makeup... <laughs> You might enjoy cilantro. You might. It's not. It's not spicy. It doesn't add heat. You know. Well, no, no. It's. I mean, if it didn't taste like soap, I'd be completely open to the experience. Yeah. But it tastes like soap to me, and I can't um, control that. <laughs> you can add um, either uh, very finely chopped garlic to it, um, or you can do ground garlic. I think just for me, the way I cook this, I like to have as the only two things that you can really discern from the the final product is the steak um obviously the you know the sauce that it's been stewing in for eight hours in a crock pot um is the uh green bell pepper you usually need one green bell pepper um cut into strips um it does it does call for onion but i like to dice it or or perhaps even mince um, or just use ground, like, um, or, uh, ground, like onion powder. Um, no, it, no, no. <laughs> okay, fine. I use a fresh onion cause you it's know what, onion. actually one of the, one of the important attributes to this is that the two themes that come up a lot in Cuban dishes are savory and fresh Yeah. Re or refreshing. It's yeah. a lot of the dishes don't call for a lot of heat. Um, but there's a Mexican good. equivalent to this that does call for heat them. Uh, machata has the slow roasted flank steak with pinto beans and uh, Spanish rice and eggs. And it would also call for maybe like some, you know, chili sauce or something like that. This does not call for that. Mm -hmm. This is savory and includes fresh ingredients. Uh, a lot of recipes you'll find online call for uh, tomato paste. And I would do... Um, about double that in strained tomatoes instead. Tomato puree? Correct. Okay. Um, and uh, the sides also is... But there are other... Actually, you know what? There are other aromatics that some people add. Some people add bay leaves. You really don't need more than two or three. Um, and then thyme. T-H-Y, right? Yeah, the, but the herb, yes. This does require thyme. Um, it's about eight hours if you do it in a crock pot about the <laughs> four hour mark um, at the four hour mark uh, you want to start pulling apart the steak so all of that shredded beef can then start to absorb some of the other flavors um, oh I didn't mention sometimes people add cumin to it you can add cumin I, I'm a huge fan of cumin so I typically do um, but not all the versions out there call for it um, in terms of sides, rice, um, your stewed black beans, which is featured on the booklet that's available at the Bon Vivant, but we'll add it to Recipes. the description. Yes. Yep. Um, and, um, I also do sliced, um, avocado and then maduros. Mm. Um, which obviously I think you've mentioned before, it needs to be sort of like overripe plantains, yeah. right? That are fried. Yeah, they can't Versus be green. Tostones, right? And so the first time I tried this dish, we went out to a restaurant in New York. Um, I won't mention the name of the restaurant because I can no longer endorse it, and I think you feel the same way. Yeah. Actually, what yeah. was the issue with the Maduros there? They were they were under they weren't mature they weren't ripe they they were under ripe, and that's they not were, a maduro that's a tosto, like they they sh served us once fried uh, tostones, and yeah. Pass, tried to pass them off as maduros, but without the ripeness there, there's not enough sugar, there's not enough sugar there to caramelize. To, that's what makes a maduro, what it is, right? And it's sweet and it's. Ugh. Beautiful. But in the heyday of this place, yeah, they that were dish was 
phenomenal. The other thing about this dish is it makes it you you have you are so full at the end of it. You could have an entire pot of coffee and not even feel it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So we had we had um we capped off the dish with excuse me. Um uh, a cup of Cuban coffee, mm-hmm. right? And then the really cool feature about this place was as you were leaving, there was somebody there hand-rolling um, cigars. It was like a Friday thing they did or a Saturday thing they did, yeah. right? Okay. But it was it was built into the experience, right? It was yeah. not something you, you want to tip. You want to tip the guy who's doing the rolling, but um, it was not like an extra expense otherwise. Yeah. So, we got the cigars, went out for a walk down to, uh, I think, Washington Square Park. And I I'm just so. letting the whole meal digest. And um, it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, I don't think I had Ropa Vieja when we went down to Miami. But we also went to Miami. And this is a place I will endorse because yes. it's like... The same way that Katz's Deli is like the iconic, you know, really, really well-known place to stop off in New York. Um, in Miami, there's um, a restaurant called Versailles. Do you remember yeah. what you had? Uh, I had the Cubano, the Cuban sandwich. Yeah. It was quite good. And I had, I had the Classico. Do you remember? I don't, I don't even remember what it was because like what was our, what was our whole flight itinerary that evening? All right, so we left New York at like our flight must have been at seven or eight, and then our flight yeah. landed. We landed at like ten, ten o'clock, ten p.m. Um, we get to Versailles. It's like ten thirty, ten forty-five, and then we get to the apartment. At this point, it's probably midnight, and we're like, all right, in three hours, we have to get up and drive across Florida to <laughs> yeah. Imokali to film uh, Fair yeah. Tomatoes. But that was an obscene amount of food. Um, do you remember if it was yellow, white, yellow rice or white rice? I cannot for the life of me remember. I remember okay. eating, I remember eating three people's worth of yucca. <laughs> That night. Yeah. Okay. Well, because they have two of these Cuban samplers on the Versailles menu. There's the classic, which is white rice, black beans, picadillo, ground beef, roast pork, sweet plantains, ham croquette, Cuban tamal, and cassava with Cuban mojo. That's that an inti- right. That's one dish. That's one thing. I'm pretty sure there's... I ate all that. Yeah. The criollo is yellow rice, black beans, ropa vieja, and then fried pork chunks with ham croquette, sweet plantains, Cuban tamal, and cassava with Cuban mojo. So some of the sides are the same between the two things. And, I mean, who doesn't like sweet plantains? Maduros are just amazing. I think... One of the things I want to do once travel becomes normal again is I need to get back there and yeah. go back. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I could not for the life of me be able to cook something like that. No, the that convenience entire dish. of having all of those things readily available without going through the labor involved in making each and every aspect of that. There's something yeah. to be said about the convenience. And I'm willing yeah. to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Um, Anyway, I also I'm very thankful this was the recipe you chose because I was very very nervous. I have seen you. <laughs> yeah, because I meant to I meant to send this to you beforehand so you could vet it. Yeah, right? and, and that, that didn't end didn't up happening. Time. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, I've seen. Why you would you mix... think I was going to do? I um, to tell you the truth, I don't know. Um, I have seen you mix Gatorade with coffee. Your logic <laughs> being. <laughs> No, 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 that, no, 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 no. It was espresso and muscle milk. <laughs> there was Gatorade in there. And I made a bro and I latte. I have a photo of it. There was Gatorade in it? Yes. I have. Uh, I think, there, I, think bl- I wanted to counteract. I wanted to counteract the dehydrating qualities of coffee. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god. <laughs> you know, because of that, I can I meal. simply cannot trust your opinion when it comes to food. You know that, right? Like like the, there are these little indicate like red let's call them red flags. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Obviously, you have cooked that which is weird. You have cooked this for me and yes, it is acceptable. It's quite good. Um but some of the things you do culinarily are scary to me. Do you remember what I had in Las Vegas? Oh my god. Oh my god. The slap in a tickle? Yeah. What what was in it? <laughs> it was called uh, the menu said slap in a tickle and it was a sandwich like a grilled cheese. Right? Yeah. So it was like a griddle sandwich, wasn't it? Uh yeah, I was I believe it was pressed in some way. Okay. Um and then it was ugh peanut butter and jelly with yeah. bacon and jalapeno. <laughs> I didn't that come up with that. That was available for purchase. Disgusting. <laughs> I cannot even begin to wrap my head around why someone would combine those ingredients. Um, needless to say, I, I would have tried it. By the way, I, I would totally try it. However, I shudder to think what that combination of foods would do to my insides. So the fact that it's not something I slap together... Um, with just what was available in my fridge, but that it was available for me to buy, that somebody else had to come up with, suggests that there also out there in the world is someone who would wear khakis with a oh button-down shirt oh my and a sport jacket and athletic socks and a sash. <laughs> and a sash that says clams. Yes. Because now the sash must say clams. What color yeah. is your sash? Uh, that's a good question. I think sky blue. You weren't thinking purple? Uh, purple's a fruit. Yeah, I like purple too. All right. Uh, I, have a, uh, I have a recipe. Yeah? It is the Bon Vivant Spritz. If you've to ever pair had it. with my Ropa Vieja. Y- you know what? You can You can do it with almost anything because it's a great versatile crisp light refreshing cocktail perfect for the summer um and it goes with just about anything um and it's a great aperitif so particularly before you start eating it's great because there's some acidity Mm -hmm. there and that gets you salivating and that gets you ready to eat food yeah um, but it is made, instead of with Aperol, it is a Meletti 1870 bitters um, spritz. And so, basically, think of it like a cross between Campari and Aperol. Campari is intensely bitter. Aperol can be a little sweet orange. And so, it's uh, this Meletti 1870 is it's sweet and a little bitter... It's infused with some herbs and spices. Um, it's like syrupy. There's orange notes. There's cherry character, uh, baking spice, and its its bitterness is very mild compared to that of of the Campari. So um, it's great. I would totally use it in a Negroni as a replacement mm-hmm. for for the Campari there, um, yeah. or a Boulevardier which is one of my favorite cocktails. Boulevardier is a Negroni, but instead of gin, it is whiskey hmm. and bitters and vermouth. Hmm. So really good stuff. It is up uh, in the show notes. Well, I sent it to you. Yep. Um, Fantastic. So I will include that yeah. in the description. Yep. Um, along with the recipe. And just one and... last item to <clears throat> yep. go over. Um I would love for you to open an email that I sent you. I see it. I have it open. Open during okay. podcast, it says. Yeah, all right. So um, this is my new ringtone. Where's the lamb sauce? 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 
<laughs> is that who I think it is? It's Gordon Ramsay, and <laughs> he is unable to locate some r- lamb sauce. <laughs> I have to send and you the video. It's quite is that good. is that a ringtone for a specific person, or that's yeah? Just when my brother ringtone? calls me, <laughs> when my brother calls me, yeah. Very good. When my mom calls me, it's the Wicked Witch of the West theme from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> uh, do you remember a video we filmed? Oh man, uh, maybe four years ago. Maybe. Um, what What does Gordon Ramsay sound like as a cat? Yes, yes, yes. I can remember. You, can you do it? Uh, <clears throat> What would Gordon Ramsay sound like as a cat? Yep. <clears throat> Very good. And that ruined your throat forever. Yeah. We'll have to pick this up next week. <coughs> yeah. Awesome. So that was a that was a tight show. Yeah. I'm happy for us. Um, yeah, it was good. So, uh, the, uh, recipe is going to be available on the description and mm-hmm. cocktail as well. Uh, I'll cut in the ringtone. <laughs> yeah, please do. Um, and, uh, the Ronnie and Ernie show is a joint production of Trio Storytelling Company and the Bon Vivant. Our show is now available on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you like what you're hearing, then commenting, subscribing, and reviewing means that this show only gets better. Recipes, projects, or anything we didn't have enough time to get into on today's show will be included in the show's description. And at each of our sites, you can also take a look at what we're currently up to and check out some of the amazingly talented people with whom we collaborate. Woo! You know, I get that right now because I rewrote it. Yeah, you rewrote it to be correct. I'm I'm a I'm a teleprompter performer. If it's if it's on there, I'm gonna say it. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna say it. So, uh, how about you? Are you are you a teleprompter performer, or do you familiarize yourself and then and then just go for it? It depends on the situation. If it's just yeah. audio, teleprompter, because I don't want to. I just want to read. Right? Yeah. So for like the comedy album that we recorded, yeah, that was EP. all teleprompter, which um, I want to start talking about on this show because okay. it's coming yeah. along. And it is. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be released this year. So I can't wait. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about that. The thing I'm loving the most about it right now is the foley art, the whole process of of putting in all the sound effects. It's got to be um, fun. But you are a master with finding the right music. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um See you next week. And uh, do you have uh, some ideas about what you're going to feature next week as a recipe? Oh, yeah. Totally. Don't you worry about it. I got it covered. Okay. All right. See you then. And um, have a good week. Yes. Cheers. Bye.